How's everybody doing? Welcome to Kong's Kitchen. Yes, it's about uh, 12 months since my last cooking stream, but uh, the last time I did it was also for Extra Life. So now again, we have another Extra Life cooking stream. Uh, so we've got, I've got quite a menu. I've got two hours to make like six dishes plus like a dessert, depending on uh, uh, what people donate. So uh, let me show you what we've got so far. Uh -huh. yeah, we've got a lineup of uh, ingredients. I've got a New York strip steak. We've got some shrimp, potatoes, wine. A whole bunch of awesome stuff. And yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making my shrimp stock. Because if you do exclamation point menu, you'll have, um, you're hungry and can't wait to see what I make things. So one of the first things I'm going to prepare is um, the Cajun shrimp and rice. So for that, I've got some large shrimp. So I'm going to shell them, but I'm going to keep the shells. So angle that downwards. So, you know, I like to keep the shells for uh, stock. And so it'll do. So I'll just take the shells and the tails and just leave it in this bowl. Meanwhile, I'll just keep the shrimp in this bowl for now. Hey, Miu! Yes, it is a cooking stream. How are you? I'm making shrimp stock. Oh! Oh, thanks for the host! Hey, Agrips Kim, you're free. Can you give me Yukiko a shout out, please? Got my hands full. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the kitchen, Miu. So, the first thing I'm going to do is make the, the stock. Making stock is really simple. I don't know why more people don't do it. And, um,. One of the things I love is, you know, whole, you know, reusing a lot of the ingredients. So here, I'm taking the shells and the tails, and then I'm going to boil it with some other ingredients to make some stock. I'll let it, you know, boil and reduce for a bit. But yeah, a great skin. You should go check out. Miu as well. Not only is she a fellow Monster Hunter, Destiny player, and Genshin Impact player, which is also a darn good cook. I should show you the pictures that she sent me on Discord. She went to culinary school and it shows. That's some amazing looking food, Miu. I'm sure it tasted just as good, if not better, than it looks. But that's one thing about the cook, my cooking, I'm trying to improve is presentation because, you know, m most of my food is really more uh, about the function rather than the form. Like, I don't know how to do some of that plating, you know? Like, what are the principles behind making it look good? So, I, I showed... Um, one of my other followers uh, in chat me used food pictures and now she's like a fan and is uh, threatening to move to Florida <laughs> to go visit me so she can get awesomely cooked food. Okay, so let me show you what I got. So I put the shells in the pot um, and I'm going to mix it. So I keep a lot of the the parts that I uh, save from 
the previous seafood dishes. So like fish parts, some onion, more fish, more shrimp shells. I keep it so I can make more stock. So I'm not wasting, you know, the food that I, that I made. Um, and super simple. All you do is you take, all you do is you take the, the spare parts, the discarded parts, put it in water. I need two and a third cup stock for my shrimp rice. So generally what I do is I put in about double the liquid that I need. Pepper. And then I'll put it on the stove, let it boil and reduce by half. So it's on the stove now. So when this is ready, in about half an hour or so, then I will use that to make uh, the Cajun shrimp and rice. I've made my own Cajun seasoning mix. It's pretty simple to put together. It's just uh, paprika, garlic powder, salt, black pepper, oregano, cayenne, onion powder, and red pepper flakes. Now, if you don't like spicy, you can take the red pepper flakes out, uh, but you definitely want the uh, uh, paprika. Oh, you can take the cayenne out too if you don't like the heat. But I think you're going to miss out on a lot of flavor if you take that out. Um, so while that's cooking, so while the stock is being made, I have like so many other dishes I need to get ready. So I'll start cooking the meat also in about half an hour because I want it to come up to room temperature before I start putting it on the uh, on the stove. What I can start to do though is prepare uh, the mix for the cornbread because we need that uh, to bake and then I can just leave it to warm for however long. So first things first, uh, I got to get the oven up to 425. And then we're going to put the dry ingredients into a bowl. Let's put the, let's get this camera a little bit closer. Yoink. All right. So nothing fancy. I'm using the recipe that's in the back of the bag. I'm making a honey cornbread. I think it'll go really nice with uh, the shrimp and especially uh, the steak. One cup of corn flour. Let's see, okay. Yeah. Now I have to remember to get the angle right for the camera. Woohoo! That's about it. Okay. And then I have one cup of all purpose flour. AP flour, as the people on Food Network call it. And then a half cup of sugar. One tablespoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, so yeah this is um, not super fancy. I will like 
So I have a beaten egg. Oh, butter. Pardon the uh, clanging noise in the background. That's just me futzing around in the kitchen. Let's do a quick melt of the butter. About 30 seconds. Uh, okay, quarter teaspoon of vanilla. So yeah, this is going to be a sweet-ish cornbread because um, with all the other things I'm cooking, I kind of want a balance of flavor. Yeah, you don't need a ton of vanilla. Yeah, this can be melted a bit longer. And a quarter cup of honey. Quarter cup of honey. Yee. In retrospect, I probably should have poured it directly into the bowl, but it's okay. Okay. There we go, melted butter. Still steamy. No. Off the microwave for the heater, and it helps to have like a non-stick utensil to get this out. So I use like this Teflon spatula. Oh, all that sweet golden honey! So yeah, for those of you, you know, tuning in while working, I hope I'm not making you all too hungry, like mugs. <laughs> but I'm glad you all stopped by and are hanging out virtually in my kitchen. Okay, great. Now it's just a matter of stirring it all together. Don't want to tip it over too much. So what I'll do is I'll change the camera angle. Oh no, I think that's as high as it goes. <laughs> if I had a cameraman, I'd like have them like position the camera over, but I don't. So let's see, I can't do it one handed. I'll show you what it's supposed to look like. It doesn't need to be smooth. You know, if you if it's super smooth, um, I don't think the texture is going to come out right. But, you know, you, it's okay to have a few lumps. But you see how it's all nice and yellow? Yellow-ish. All right. Next, you take an 8 by 8 baking pan. There's two ways to do this. You can either grease the pan or uh, you can use parchment paper to line it uh, so it doesn't get sticky. Um, if you grease it with butter, it's going to have a nice little crust to it, but you're gambling that it's not going to stick to the pan. If you use parchment paper, it's going to be a little softer when it comes out, but it won't stick. So, your choice. Me, I'm going to use butter. So take about a half a tablespoon of butter. No need to be fancy, just rub it all over. Slather this thing. before I started my stream. Sheesh. But yeah, you want the, the butter on the sides. Just 
and in, especially the corners. Forget the corners, that will snag when you pull that when you pull this thing out. Get those corners. All right. Great. Oh, you hear that beeping? That means the oven is ready. So, I'm going to do a little, I'm going to pour into the baking pan. I should have wiped my hands because uh, it's all the butter. Great. Into the sink. And now this will go into the oven for, uh, what's it say here? 20 to 25 minutes. Into the oven you go. So people see it's going into the oven. <laughs> Doo -doo. Okay. <laughs> She's uh, from the local children's specialized hospital in New Jersey. Hello. Thank you for dropping by. Uh, yeah, I'm cooking up a meal for the kids. <laughs> okay, so now I can reduce the shrimp stock. It's been boiling. It's kind of simmering. So it's kind of what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's all going to go into a strainer, so don't worry about the solids. Um, but yeah, it uh, should be ready in about 10, 20 minutes, and then we'll start making the, the Cajun shrimp and rice. <laughs> Minica, how are you? So, so yes, uh, fellow... Uh, Extra life for as well, Minica plays. So yeah, since I'm streaming from my phone, I don't have any of my fancy extra life overlays or alerts, so pardon that. But in return, you guys get to see um, some awesome food being made. So Minica, uh, I just put the cornbread in the oven. I've got shrimp stock on the stove. And uh, now, what should we do next? Oh, maybe we can do the roast potatoes. So I've got some roasted, I've got some roasted, what's well, going to be roasted? I've got a bag of fingerlings. I wonder if y'all are familiar with fingerling potatoes. I'm going to bring out the knife. It's my favorite thing to do. Maintain the, the edge of my cutlery. All right! There's one thing that uh, is a big tech peeve of mine as uh, someone who looks, likes to cook is people who don't maintain their equipment. That includes their knives. Yay, a bunch of potatoes. So, we're going to roast these. Well, we're going to split them in half, um, toss them in a bowl with uh, oil and spices. Alright, so I'm going to move this over a little bit. So one of the more laborious things about working with potatoes, cleaning it. You got to clean each one because if you don't, you might have some uh, dirt, you know, so it's, it's an underground vegetable. But I, I'm glad to finally, um, be able to do another cooking stream for you all. The last time I did a cooking stream for the, the children's hospital was because um, they sent me a gift basket with all these like awesome ingredients. And I was like, I got to cook this and I'll do it on stream. So here I am again, cooking for extra life. FTK for the kids, fire up the kitchen. The only thing that's missing is like smell-o-vision. If you guys were here, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss this with a bunch of aromatic herbs. You know, so I have rosemary, um, I have some thyme, 
oregano. That's gonna be great. Another baking pan for later. So yeah, let's bring this closer. I can smell the stock. Oh, your uncle does that too. Oh yeah, you've got to use the those shrimp parts. And then when you're done using the shrimp shells for uh, stock, I I just put them in the soil for compost. No need to waste anything. And you're just get slicing these in half. Being careful not to accidentally bump my eggs here. That'll be for later when I make my sauce. But you got, you know, um, I don't know if you see from the camera, but I've got some New York strip steak for the steak later. Give me one sec. Waste not, want not. Yes. Absolutely. I think food waste is a particular problem. Uh, I think here, especially in America, um, I know a lot of people who don't know how to use all their food, so they just throw it away when they're done with it. Like all my vegetable scraps, I freeze it so I can make vegetable stock later. Chicken bones, pork bones, beef bones, I'll save it, roast it, boil day and then freeze it for stock. Okay, now to get a bowl. Hear all the banging around in the kitchen. That's just me. Okay, we'll put all the potatoes here. Now, let's get that, get the uh, toaster oven ready. Some olive oil. Again, just freely slather the olive oil with the potatoes. I have some uh, fresh rosemary. I love rosemary with these potatoes. You don't need to do anything special, just strip the stems. into the bowl. I like to use just a couple sprigs. Here. So yeah, we just strip the stems. <laughs> I don't think you saw anything. There we go. Yeah, no, no fancy stuff here. It's just a very simple dish, but given what I'm cooking today, I thought it would be a nice pairing. Uh, salt. Always make sure it's seasoned. Pepper. Um, and I'm using the last of like my thyme. I had uh, a thyme plant that was growing in my windowsill and I was like uh, I haven't used this in a while so time to put it to use. And I just Toss it by hand. Make sure it's nice and covered. All the oil and the and the herbs. Then you put it all in the baking pan. So you generally kind of want one layer. You know, you don't want it to pile it on top, otherwise it won't cook evenly. Make sure the, the herbs are spread out. So uh, pardon me if I don't respond to chat super quick. Um, I don't actually see chat on my phone. I have to go look over at my laptop <laughs> and I have my head down on the food. Okay, single layer. What's neat is you can just use, you know, any old toaster oven. I set it to 425, popping it in to bake. 
for about 25, 30 minutes. So there, that's neat because I can just pop that in while I go focus on other dishes. Uh, but I think the next thing I'm going to work on is the shrimp, the Cajun shrimp and rice. So the stock I think is almost ready. I'm going to have to clean out the sink because I'm going to need it uh, when I when I pour out the uh, the liquids. So pardon me while I do some dishes. But you know, it's always good to keep a clean kitchen, right? Okay. So I need my measuring cup. I'm gonna show you guys how I do my straining when I, when I make stock. So there's the sink. So I use a what we call a, a, a conical strainer. Some people call it a chinois or a Chinaman's hat. Um, this is great for straining because of the cone. When you pour stuff in the top, uh, the the cone shape creates extra pressure to extrude like the liquids from the solids. All the shells nice and orange or pink. Oh, I hear a little mini Kong in the background. <laughs> All right, so that's about four cups. So for those that missed it earlier, I made my own Cajun seasoning. It's just paprika, garlic powder, cayenne, red pepper flakes, onion powder, salt and pepper. You don't have to buy your own, you don't have to buy your own Cajun seasoning if you can make it yourself. in the butter, fire up the stove. All right, so while the butter is melting, um, I'm gonna chop up some garlic. You don't need to be too fancy with the mince this time. But, uh, just so that you see how I'm going to get the garlic cut up. I mean, there's there's some uses for toasted butter, but not in this recipe. A little smush on the garlic. It helps take out some of the skin, but also breaks up the actual garlic for use. Double tap. All right. Then let's mince it. Just once down. And then across. Again, just a rough chop. You don't need to get it too fine. And you know, and you see, there's a rocking motion to the cut. You know, it's not like da -da 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 -da, like you see on TV. I mean, there are some there are some applications where you, where you want to do that, where you have to like a rapid vertical chop. But uh, this one, no. You just want to let the blade do the work for you. 
it's curved for a reason, so let it rock forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. Okay. Tossing the, the, the garlic with the, the butter that's just melted. And you want the half of the Cajun seasoning. That's about half. <laughs> and then um, you put in about a, a one and a third cup of uncooked rice into here. You know, and then you want to stir it so you make sure all the butter and all the Cajun seasoning, the garlic, it coats so that it coats the rice. See how the rice itself is getting red? That's what you want to see. So I want to use about half of the shrimp stock that I made. So about, yeah, two cups. Give it a stir. One of these days I got to get a top mounted camera so you can see what I'm doing. But instead what I'll do is I'll just show you. So it looks kind of soupy. Don't worry, because it'll it'll reduce. Um, all right. So now you want to get up to a boil, and once it does, oh, there we go. Then I, we can cover it and simmer it. But right now you just want it to get to a boil. So while that's happening, uh, what we can do now is we're gonna I'm gonna melt two more tablespoons of butter I don't know if you can hear it but it's starting to bubble so simmer I mean I'll check it anyway so oh camera I'm just getting the butter just melted. And then I'm going to mix the rest of the Cajun seasoning with, with the butter. So you have know, like a red looking butter. Why did we do that? Why did we make like a little Cajun butter paste? Well, it's because we're going to pour it in with the shrimp. We're going to coat the shrimp first with all the spices. Spices. You want a nice little, nice solid coat around. I mean, on the shrimp. So yeah, nice and red. Very, very Cajuny. Right, and then you want to let that settle for now. Oh, let's go check on the cornbread. All right, so there's the stove. There's the light. And where's an oven mitt so I don't burn myself on stream? <laughs> this will do. A 
little specks of flour, but that's not a problem. Let's go check for doneness. All right, normally I use a toothpick, but I don't know where mine, my rest of mine are, so I'm just going to use a chopstick. What am I doing? So to check for doneness, you check in the thickest part, and if it comes out clean, then it's good. All right, so the cornbread is ready. We're going to keep it warm because we still got like an hour left to go. Cornbread, red. And keep it warm. I'll just, you know, put it in tin foil, tin foil, aluminum foil. Who uses tin foil anymore? Except to make hats. start prepping the steak. Separate cutting board. About a pound of New York strip. Nice marbling. Lots of fat on the sides. So generally, the way the way I prep it is I take the steak and bring it up to room temperature, which it's not quite yet. Um, but you know, I'm gonna pour, be generous with the salt. And the pepper. Flip it. Do the same thing. So I'm not going to cook it yet. I will let this be for like 20 minutes. Again, I want it to come to room temperature because I want to cook it just right. If you cook a cold steak, uh, the outside is going to get cooked and the middle is going to be not so good. So yeah, let this go for like 20 minutes. So while the rice is cooking, we're going to be putting the shrimp in. Plop. Some of the extra Cajun paste on there. So yeah, so that way the shrimp cooks along with the rice and also imparts flavor as it cooks. It really is a one pot wonder. Normally, I like to also make this with like um, the wheel sauce. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this to the back burner. Again, I'm going to bring it back up to a boil, then let it come down to simmer. All right, so the potatoes are about halfway. So what you want to do with potatoes at halfway is you want to take them out and then uh, flip them. So you get an even cooking. Ooh, hot. So you, I can already smell the herbs. So you just want to rotate, you want to flip them. That way they all get cooked the same way. You can tell which one's the cooked side already because they're a little toasted. A little golden brown.
Almost, almost. I need to buy tongs. I actually had tongs, but then they uh, they broke. So I will have to go buy buy another set for Christmas for myself. Unless you know, the missus wants to hint hint <laughs> help out there. All right, that's flipped. Back in. So opening it up, I lost some heat. So I'm gonna add like a couple more minutes to the cook, to the cooking time. Okay, we're making good time. Almost an hour in. We've got the cornbread done. The roast fingerling potatoes are about halfway done. The Cajun shrimp and rice is about halfway done. Um, so yeah, we still have to do the steak, which is coming up to room temp now. Um, I've got some red wine um, mushrooms, duxelles, what they call it, classical French. And we've got béarnaise sauce to go with the steak, and then just sautéed green beans to like round out the whole thing. Yeah, so for those just tuning in, exclamation point menu is the menu for the day. Um, yeah, the, the green beans was like a last minute addition, but uh, I figured it would be a perfect way to kind of round out everything. Again, not one across contaminate, so I just flip, flip it over. It's just water. Um, and then we're going to mince up the mushrooms. Now, traditionally, red wine duck cell sauce, or duck cells, not sauce, the cells goes with beef wellington, um, but this time we're going to pair it with steak. Now most of this has already been sliced, so it makes my job a little bit easier. I just got to dice it up. One can argue I could have used a food processor, but uh, no. That would be cheating. Wiped off the blade. And got a lot of mushrooms for this. Getting these mushrooms all minced up. Put the mushrooms in a bowl. Now you can use a, any sort of mushrooms. I'm using a baby Bella's, but um, shiitakes I hear work well. I initially thought it wasn't gonna work well, but then I read up on it and it's fine. Oyster works well, cremony works well, even like button mushrooms. But this will be a nice like earthy note to the rest of the dishes. That should be plenty. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of mushrooms in here. Look at all those mushrooms. Alright, and that on medium heat. This is why I moved the rice from the front burner to the back. Uh, I'm going to melt even more butter. <laughs> My goodness. Alright, in with that butter. butter around so it cooks evenly okay let's go check on the potatoes still looking good all right 
What was that? Gamer Wife Mom! Thank you for the follow. How are you? Welcome to Kong's Kitchen, where I'm uh, cooking for extra life. Hello. <laughs> so I'm making a red wine duxelles. It's a classic French dish where you uh, saute um, mushrooms with some red wine reduction. Well, it'll reduce itself, but uh, uh, add in the dry ingredients. So put in the mushrooms. And I get a nice little toss in the butter. Make sure everything's nice and coated. down get one of your shallots ready so I just sliced it lengthwise right then I'll slice I don't know yeah across and then lengthwise so you're making like a grid that way all you gotta do is cut downwards and you got a nice mince to your shallot Some of the outer pieces stuck together, but so yeah, that's how, that's how I cut and mince my shallots. Oh, that's the ding of the roasted fingerlings. Trying to look good. So the shallots mixed in with the with the uh, mushrooms, all coated in a little bit of butter, a little bit like two and a half tablespoons of butter. Again, a very classic French preparation. I love their butter. Um, and now for some wine. My favorite part: quarter cup. The Pinot Noir. Generally, you want something a little dry rather than sweet. Okay. Right, I'll bring it up to a boil, then again, let that simmer. Before I forget, some, uh, some thyme from my plants into the dish. Oh, yeah. I can smell this. Just the wine wafting off of here. Woo! Okay, let's make the Béarnaise sauce. For those who don't know, Béarnaise is a, a derivative of Hollandaise. The French chef Auguste Escoffier classified uh, sauces into five basic types called the mother sauces. They're called mother sauces because they're sauce bases. From there, if you add ingredients, it becomes another sauce. So hollandaise uh, is an egg yolk emulsion, kind of like mayonnaise. Um, you add their base ingredients, but then once you add tarragon, uh, some uh, like a white wine vinegar, then it becomes um, baronaise. So it's the child, baronaise is the child of hollandaise sauce. It's the kid. We're cooking for the kids. It's a kid sauce. I thought it was not only is it a classic pairing with steak, I thought it was also like contextually appropriate, you know. Let's go check out those fingerling potatoes. I think Extra Life needs to make kitchen implements. Alright, so yeah, it's nice and toasty. Hot. Very fragrant because I've used uh, some fresh rosemary, salt and pepper. So these are good. Alright. Okay. 
Okay, so the white comes down here. And this one, the yolk goes there. The shallot's done. I get one shallot. So you see, like, I'll just mince out the, the shallots. If you have a, a mandolin slicer, you can use that too. But uh, with practice, I find that I'm actually faster than the mandolin. If you have fresh tarragon, I would recommend using fresh. I could not find fresh in the store, so I'm using dried. Um, I find that I use about double uh, for dried than I use with fresh. So if it calls for one tablespoon of fresh tarragon, I use two tablespoons of dried. Um, so yeah, two tablespoons of dried. I have a measuring cup. Okay. Then quarter cup of white wine vinegar. Then a quarter cup of dry white. So here I have Sauvignon Blanc. So again, any old dry white wine will do. You don't have to get anything expensive. But I will say this. Don't buy the cooking wine at the grocery store. That's that's like closer to vinegar than it is wine. If you're not willing to drink it, you don't cook with it. Okay. Put this on medium heat and let it reduce. So wait here. All right, so the duck cells look like they're almost ready. They're almost, you have to cook it until the wine is evaporated. There's still a little bit of wine left. The rice though, let's check on that. I think it's good. So let me show you all what this Cajun shrimp and rice looks like. Looks good to me, smells good too. So let's just put it on low and, or I can take it off the heat. I'll turn off the heat on the back burner. All right, Cajun shrimp and rice done. Red wine to cells, probably five more minutes. So, okay, the potatoes are done. The cornbread's done. The shrimp and rice is done. Now it's just the uh, the mushrooms, uh, the béarnaise sauce, and then um, I have some green beans with just a quick saute in there um, with shallots and lemon. Um, maybe my next cooking stream, I'll do a beer battered something. I like making um, Irish <laughs> Irish Guinness cupcakes with chocolate. And something about Guinness and chocolate goes really well together. space here. That's about ready. So it's just a uh, red wine and mushroom with shallots prepared in a way that it should balance out like a, a steak. Yeah, this will go on, this will get plated soon. At the rate we're going. Next, we're going to make green beans. Again, this is a very simple dish. But I think one that pairs nicely with everything we've got going. Throw on some butter. Got a small shallot in there. Okay, 
sure that's going. The shallots in there. All right, now the beans. Again, super simple. Butter, shallot, beans. Just let it saute for like five minutes or so. Just so you see what's going on here. We got the butter and the shallots. Um, just cook it for five minutes until it so softens a little bit, right? Um, and then I'll save these slices for garnish. And then I think that should be it. I'm going to move it to the back burner. And I'll start to get ready for the main event, the steak. So yeah, I took that lemon, right? What I'm going to do with that lemon is I'm going to put it, I'm just going to squeeze it on top of the beans. Get ready for more. So yeah, I've got a New York strip steak that I've allowed to come up to room temperature, seasoned it prior to. And now I'm going to get this going. Now the French, as you've noticed from the dishes I've made, they love their butter. So this is going to be a classic French preparation. It's going to be a pan seared steak, uh, but basted with butter. More butter. Actually, you know what? Maybe I should get the sauce ready first. So that takes that take less time to make. All right, so let me just whisk the eggs. Whisk it until it's nice and thick. You're introducing air bubbles into it. And then what I do is, like, I will pour it slowly into the pot and I wish I could get the camera there so here's what I'll do uh, let's see if this will make it do a little at a time going all the way I know I couldn't see what I'm doing but let me take it off the heat for a little bit So yeah, just letting the sauce formulate as you whisk, it'll develop as it goes. I mean, I can already smell the tarragon, you know, and the lemon, not lemon, the vinegar. Um, already. Now you don't want to overheat it because it's it's raw it's egg yolk. If you overheat it, it's going to start to curdle like a, like an omelet. But if you under if you undercook it, um, believe it or not, it's going to get a little grainy. It's just the way the chemicals work with uh, with this sauce. Okay, let that rest. Okie doke. And as uh, as it goes, I'll put more. As it goes, I'll put more butter in. So I like walked into the camera almost. Okay, next, let's get the steak going. I've already warmed up the the pan. Let me rinse off my knife. We're getting there, folks. Steak. 
Start with one tablespoon of butter. I use a cast iron. Cast iron is the workhorse of my kitchen. It distributes, it conducts heat evenly. And if you know how to maintain it, this will last you a long time. That's the initial sear and the initial, initial melt. I'll put on the initial sear in a second. Um, let's break up some garlic. So you're gonna add aromatics to your steak. And I use garlic and rosemary, but you can use thyme, oregano, whatever you like. lemon on the beans. All right, so let's get this on here. Some more garlic. Now, if you like the sound of sizzling, wait till I put this meat on. Some more shallots. This time I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mince it. I'll just do a, sl a half moon slice. So you want the, uh, you want these ingredients to impart um, the aroma onto the meat. All right, let's do this. About a pound of New York strip steak. So I like to do about uh, three minutes on one side for a nice sear. Then I'll flip it. So three minutes to complete the sear. While that's going, I'm going to keep stirring the béarnaise. So one minute has passed. This is going to be the longest three minutes on the stream, just watching, watching the clock as this thing sears. I hope you can hear the sizzling of the, of the steak. I don't touch the steak yet. I think a lot of people make the mistake of, uh, not the mistake, the mistake of, uh, you know, playing around with uh, the steak before it's before it's ready to be moved. I'm just moving the, er uh, the herbs. Oh yeah, herbs. Fresh rosemary, straight in. Many people just like want to cut the meat or move the meat around. No, no, don't do that. That's no good. Let it do its thing. It'll, it'll, it'll be done when it's ready. So yeah, well, while I'm waiting for that, let's get the sauce sauced. One more minute and I'll turn it. Okay. Again, I'm just moving the shallots and the garlic around. When I edit on YouTube, you're not going to see this part. It'll already have been turned. But okay. So let me just show you what it looks like for now before I make the turn.
So you see how there's like a nice like brown crust to it? That's what you're looking for in a sear. If you see like black, you overcooked it. <laughs> so I want to do about two minutes on this side, then I'll do 30 seconds on the on the sides of the meat. So I'll lock in that sear. And then we'll do about 10 or so minutes of basting in the butter. Oh yes, so meanwhile the sauce is thickening. This is gonna be nice. You gotta keep stirring though, otherwise it'll curdle or break. We want a broken sauce. By break, I mean separate. The sauce separates. I think the worst. Especially for an emulsion, because that means a, an emulsion is reliant on um, that mix. All right, so I think that's about right. Yep. So I'm going to hold it on the sides like this, because I want the sides of the meat to also sear. About 30 seconds each. Now the other side, yeah, you want to make sure you get the sides as well. All right, and now for my favorite part, the butter base, okay. Take two more tablespoons of butter. Just plop it down. Let it melt. And as it as it as it melts, it's gonna become liquidy and then you can just baste it on top of the steak. Maybe if I switch hands it'll be a better angle to see on the camera. But I think I obstructed it too much. Okay, so I've got the herbs and aromatics on one side. Let's move it back. All right. Get this, get the butter. Just baste it on top. Baste, baste. So it'll start cooking like that. Anyway, so you see the steak. It's browning quite a bit, which is good. Just gotta keep basting, like, I don't know, 10 minutes or so. Don't be afraid to add more butter if needed. Yeah. No, oh, yeah, I could have done this. Just reverse the grip. Ah, the sound of sizzling steak. Alright, almost ready. Ooh, the sauce is looking good. So yeah, in about five, ten minutes, this should all be done. This is like ASMR, 
the sound of sizzling steak. I mean, maybe. A little more butter for good measure. Gild the lily, as they say. Oh wait, can we hold it? Yeah, because I want to be able to finish this in five minutes or so, and then I will let it rest. You want to let it rest to, to allow the meat? So when you cook the meat, right, the heat forces the juices to the center of the meat. By letting it rest, you allow the juices to come back to the edges of the meat. If you cut it without letting it rest, your meat will be tough. Because all the juices will run out. As opposed to letting it like get back into its place on the sides of the meat. Now if you go to restaurants, this is, this is probably the, one of the more expensive dishes steak. You know, they'll do all the, a lot of other fancy things like truffle oil, which is not bad. You know, I don't have truffle oil. What I do have is... Uh, that red wine duck sauce, uh, that sauce side. So you'll, you'll get your truffle either way with mushrooms. Okay. I'll let that rest, I'll let, not that rest, I'll let that go for a bit. Now let's take a look at the sauce. It has thickened quite a bit. I think that, that's how I want it. And one more minute. This should be good to go. Let me just double check. So, see there's a little bit of spring to, to the meat. That's what you want. If it was totally firm, then it overcooked it. If it was too soft, like it didn't come back up, then it's undercooked. But this is just about ready. So yeah, turn it off. Let's take it off of take it off of here. There's a New York strip steak. Butter basted pan roasted New York strip steak. So yeah, this will rest for 10 minutes so that, well, five, 10 minutes, and then we'll, we'll plate. Although we can start plating now. Okay, why don't we do that? Challenge with plating is, you know, trying to make everything look presentable while also making sure you pack in all the, all the, uh, accompaniments to your dish. Ugh. So yeah, I've got cornbread with butter. Uh, Cajun shrimp and rice, uh, roasted green beans with uh, sautéed in lemon butter and shallots, roasted fingerling potatoes with rosemary, red wine uh, duck cells, which is mushrooms, all minced up. Then I have a New York strip steak with béarnaise sauce. And now, let's check the cut. I won't be satisfied unless this is uh, at least medium rare. Ooh, it's tender. Yep. I mean, it's hard to see in this light, but uh, if I brush the sauce away. It's uh, it's more like medium uh, than medium rare, but that's fine. I don't mind. But it, it does have the distinct, like, pink and a little bit of red in the middle that means i let it rest just right here let's do a kind of a mukbang style and uh taste wow the sauce really pairs well the um acidity of the vinegar and the tarragon really balances out the meat the savoriness mm. 
Very good. So here's the thing. I already raised... <laughs> the milestone I set for myself was if I raised $700, I would do another cooking stream. So uh, I want to do another like themed cooking stream. And the theme will be similar to this. You tell me what you want. And then as long as I can get the ingredients, I'll cook it. So if you have any like cooking questions or need advice on anything or want me to just challenge myself with a dish, feel free to uh, let me know. But yeah, no, I appreciate y'all hanging out. This was a lot of fun. I will do another one. So um, yeah, feel free to join my Discord uh, for, for suggestions on what you want me to make. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have some fun.